watching ESPN's Road to Champ Week presented by Wendy's. It's winner take all in Reed Arena this afternoon. The best teams in the SEC will meet. The SEC regular season title belongs to the winner of this game. South Carolina and Texas A&M at the top of the SEC standings. Remember the SEC tournament seeding this year decided by win percentage. The winner of this game gets the one seed in Greenville. The loser will get the two seed next week in the conference tournament. So excited to be with you for this one. Courtney Lyle alongside national championship winning head coach Carolyn Peck. And not only is it a big game, but we're glad we got to the last game of the regular season and there's so much on the line. Yeah, it's not a normal senior night. This is where everything matters. And these are two teams that could possibly be competing for a national championship. What a dress rehearsal we'll have today. For Texas A&M, they boast a lot of depth and balance. And Kayla Wells recently has been an X factor, averaging 17 points per game in their last four outings. Texas A&M can score and hurt you in a number of different ways. And the reason of the versatility is because of number 11, Kayla Wells. She is known to be a three-point shooter, but she has demonstrated that she's a willing driver as well. When she has that double threat, hey, Texas A&M is hard to guard, and she'll be a handful for the Gamecocks today. South Carolina boasts not only a candidate for SEC, but National Player of the Year in Aaliyah Boston, who averages a double-double. And in order for South Carolina to have a chance to win the SEC regular season championship, they're going to have to play through Aaliyah Boston. She is dominant. She is smart. She is an intimidator on the defensive side of the ball. But you got to give it to the big girl inside. Doesn't have to shoot it every time, but make your offense work through going through the paint. The first top five matchup in the history of Reed Arena in any sport. Winner, the SEC regular season champs. And South Carolina in a man-to-man -man defense. They have a stingy defense. Both of these two teams do. There's Kayla Wells taking the first shot and drops it in for the Aggies. For South now, Carolina, their starting lineup, they boast three sophomores. The youth getting it done for the past two seasons for the Gamecocks. Oh, and the great experience last year. They went undefeated in the regular SEC season. So now they know what it takes to win. This Texas A&M team, they're playing a different style without a Kennedy Carter, but they have really, they've worked this balance very well. A&M, a very unselfish group. Gary Blair says he hasn't had to coach that aspect of it. They love to get everybody involved. And Destiny Henderson up off the window for Carolina. That's one of the things Gary Blair was concerned with. South Carolina and especially Destiny Henderson. She's got another, she got another level of speed when she's running in transition. Sierra Johnson working inside against Aaliyah Boston. She's playing like she wants the ball. That would help, definitely help the Aggies. Turnover as India Jones travels. Talked about the speed of South Carolina in transition. Destiny Henderson, look, you have got to make her change directions. Make her give the ball up because if she's coming at you full speed, don't think that's all she's got. There's another speed coming. Inside to Aaliyah Boston. That's why you want to go through Boston. She had only averaged over the last two games about five points a game. And Dawn Staley recognized, listen, guards, you're going to get your time, but you've got to play through your center, Aaliyah Boston. And that doesn't mean that Boston is taking a shot every time. She makes such smart decisions on when to pass out. She's a willing passer, and she recognizes when there's a double team coming or if there's a better shot to kick out to. She's not going to force anything. Zaya Cook gets her shot blocked by Aaliyah Wilson. Wilson leads the Aggies in block shots. Boston in trouble, and they'll whistle for a foul. Gary Blair wanted the help ball. Sierra Johnson was the one down low. 
Oh, Gary Blair's not going to be happy about that one. I, I thought it was a good tie-up by Sierra Johnson. Aaliyah Boston exposed the ball. Johnson just grabbed it. Sierra Johnson coming off a game where she picked up four fouls against Alabama, got in foul trouble there. They need her tonight. And this will be a held ball. It will stay with Texas A&M. It's going to be interesting to watch, Courtney, the two point guards of these two teams, Des Destiny Henderson for South Carolina and Jordan Nixon for Texas A&M. She's a transfer from Notre Dame, but she has become kind of the brainchild up front for the Aggies in distributing the basketball. This is Aaliyah Wilson with the ball right now. The transfer from Arkansas inside to India Jones. Yeah, we mentioned Aaliyah Boston being a double-double machine. India Jones can also do that. She's got 13 double-doubles on the season. And very rarely is there going to be an offense drawn up to go to India Jones. She normally, it's when a play is broken down, she moves so well without the basketball and definitely an offensive rebounding machine. Here comes the double team, and it results in a turnover. Kayla Wells out with it. Just like that, India Jones cleanup duty. She never quits on a play. You know, even though Kayla Wells was out at front, you didn't see the other white jerseys, but I can guarantee you in every transition play, you're going to see number 31, India Jones, there just in case. And that's not a new thing for India Jones. She has done that her entire Texas A&M career. Well, first on the defensive end with the deflection and Kayla Wells pushing in transition. Who's in, coming in the picture right there? India Jones with the putback. Back-to-back -back turnovers for South Carolina. South Carolina icing the ball screens, not allowing that middle penetration from Texas A&M. It's going to be another jump ball. This one will go to South Carolina, but you saw the missed layup there for South Carolina. That's something they have struggled with all season. And that's just a matter of focus. You're going to get contact. you got to focus on the finish, not waiting for a whistle. Offensive foul on Aaliyah Boston. You watch the rotation of India Jones off the ball, comes over and gets establishes defensive positioning before Aaliyah Boston can get there. We're already seeing the kind of impact India Jones can have on the game for Texas A&M as Aaliyah Boston takes a seat with that first foul. So Sierra Johnson has one foul, Aaliyah Boston has one foul. Sierra Johnson needs to get inside and go to work. Aaliyah Wilson, another weapon that Texas A&M has. All five starters average double figures in SEC play. Johnson working around Letitia Me here. Henny swiped it. Brie Beal finishes. And that was a timely delivery by Destiny Henderson of getting the ball to, uh, to Brie Beal. But the play before trying to get the ball to the post, you can't just throw it to get rid of it. You've got to let your post have positioning and lead them to a score. Me here kicks back out to Brie Beal at the top of the key. Rebound by Jones, and she's fouled. It will be Texas A&M basketball. Winner of this game is the SEC regular season champion. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. Try the new jalapeno popper chicken sandwich and salad today at participating U.S. Wendy's.
Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. Two national championship winning head coaches going head to head. Gary Blair won one in 2011. Don Staley in South Carolina won one in 2017. And both of these teams on track looking like national championship contenders again. These two coaches at the top of the SEC when it comes to conference wins among active coaches. Don Staley could tie Gary Blair with a win today. We were talking to Don Staley and she didn't even realize or couldn't remember that she's been at South Carolina for 13 seasons. I told her when you turn 50, you have those moments where things kind of slip away, but she was very complimentary of her time at South Carolina and gave a lot uh, of credit to the fans and the community to go along with the university to attribute to the success they've had. Sierra Johnson tries to go back up and is fouled by Leticia Ami here. South Carolina is looking to go back to back SEC regular season titles. Don Staley's team last season finished the year number one in the nation on track to be the number one seed overall in the NCAA tournament before everything was shut down. Lost two key seniors and they've had to regroup this year and figure out the identity of this team. Well, and not just losing two seniors, but vital seniors. You had Ty Harris, who brought the leadership and running from that point guard position and the attitude that was brought in by Kiki Herbert Harrigan. And so she has been waiting to see the development this year of who was going to lead. You don't have to replace those two, but you do have to bring that leadership. Wilson back inside to Sierra Johnson. Finishes over a me here. Aaliyah Boston on the bench for South Carolina. Just has one foul. But Don Staley has to be careful and play conservative so early in the game. First points for Zaya Cook. Well, and now how will South Carolina handle Aaliyah Boston being on the bench. At times, South Carolina's offense can get a little stagnant. There are times it's a beautiful work in motion, but they've got to find that fluidity with their offense. Beal leading the break, just steps right through all the Texas A&M defenders. That's one of the best parts of South Carolina's game. It's just scoring in transition. And when Bree Bill goes, it's bully ball. She's so strong. She can get through and by the defense. South Carolina averages 17 fast break points a game. Here we go. Held ball, possession arrow pointing to Texas A&M. The development of Leticia and me here has come along through this sophomore season and Don Staley has talked about how the game is starting to slow down for her. You can see the confidence and the aggressive aggressiveness she's playing with. Out of bounds off of Texas A&M. South Carolina doesn't have a huge bench, but the depth that they do have are contributors. And Don Staley has said when she brings somebody in like a Lily Grissett or a Leticia Ami here, it's because she 100% trusts them to go in the game and make things happen. Well, it allows South Carolina to stay fresh on the floor. It also makes you pay attention to your job, accountability, because if you're not getting it done, Don Staley has no problem with getting that rotation happening. South Carolina just one loss in SEC play this season. That was to Tennessee. It ended a 31-game SEC win streak. Texas A&M's only loss in the conference was to LSU, who they beat a few weeks after that loss. But I'll tell you, both of these two coaches, they would rather be in this position right now, regardless of whether or not they're undefeated or with a defeat. You just have to play well enough all season long Gary Blair talked about you cannot allow South Carolina to have too much distance. So she, he knew he had to take care of home court and he wanted to be at this point in striking distance 
for a piece or to win the regular season SEC championship. Lily Grissett with the layup for South Carolina. How excited was Gary Blair yesterday when we talked to him to play this basketball game? Oh, <laughs> I think he was like a kid just before Christmas and to be able to play it at home. I mean, he was, you know, he hates the fact that, that you have the COVID restrictions because of the, uh, and limit the attendance. He also hates the fact that because of the COVID restrictions, he can't pass out candy before the game as well. Yeah. But <laughs> he was so changes. excited. But he said he would rather be playing Don Staley. Maybe on the he'd like to play on the golf course. He talked about just how and how competitive <laughs> and what respect though he has for Don Staley. Yeah, every time we've had Texas A&M this season, Gary Blair has brought up how good and impressed he is with South Carolina. Well, you look at the recruits that they have brought in, the development, you know, the same thing that he did when he came to Texas A&M of just building it, putting yourself in striking distance. You know, having great talent like India Jones to come in when he had Sidney Carter and Colson when they were able to win the national championship. It'll be out of bounds off an A&M South Carolina ball. Shot clock still on. But India Jones, watch, she has just developed, expanding her game. They're going off the bounce and attack. We already saw her on the glass. Such a vital part, part of the Aggies' success. Henderson will try the other side. Takes the long two. South Carolina down by a point. A&M can hold for the last shot. They brought in Mackenzie Green at the point. I think you've got to get the ball to Aaliyah Wilson, number two for Texas A&M. They do right there. Off the screen, drops it in. A bucket at the buzzer for Aaliyah Wilson. Texas A&M has a three-point lead. Aaliyah Wilson finds that window. It opens it up. She knocks the shot down. That's exactly what Gary Blair was looking for. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. Aaliyah Wilson hits one at the buzzer, and Texas A&M has a three-point lead as we get set for the start of the second quarter. A couple of players to watch in this game who have made Carolyn's SEC Player of the Year candidate list, Aaliyah Boston, and of course, India Jones, who already has eight points and five rebounds in this game alone. She's been impressive and on a mission early on. Well, and I've got to put India Jones in that list in conversation because when you look at anybody that's averaging a double-double and very rarely is there a play called for her, she's getting her points from just broken plays and going to the offensive glass, and then you can guarantee night in, night out, she's going to get you double-figure rebounds. Aaliyah Boston is back out on the floor for South Carolina. She picked up one early foul, and Dawn Staley sat her, but back to start the second quarter. And with her having two fouls, Gary Blair's got to be thinking, I have got to get touches for Sierra Johnson, and Sierra's got to attack because they were able to be productive with Boston on the, on the bench. Can you get her one more foul? I can guarantee you Don Staley is probably going to sit her the rest of the way until halftime. Sierra Johnson now picks up her first foul. And India Jones back in the game as Sierra Johnson will take a seat. Well, now with, with Johnson out of the game at the five, that's going to be India Jones. That's a different guard for Aaliyah Boston. India Jones can go away from the basket a lot more active and moves in a lot of different, more different areas than Sierra Johnson. Kayla Wells in midair. I love that dribble pull up that Kayla Wells has gotten more confident with in this senior season for her, not just relying on the three point shot. Winner of this game is the SEC regular season champion. 
Roxy, right now A&M has four guards on the floor, really just one post with India Jones. Wilson got around to Leah Boston using that speed. Henderson steps into it, but it's off. Bree Beal up and in. To watch how Texas A&M is keeping Aaliyah Boston occupied up away from the basket. What does that do? That leaves driving lanes for Texas A&M. A huge kick out to a waiting Destiny Pitts. She was born to hit the three. Yeah, Pitts, Pitts transferring in from Minnesota. She was the Big Ten Freshman of the Year because she could score from the three-point line. You see how Texas A&M is able to drive, have the defense to collapse with this four, really five out offense. And then you've got a shooter you can find in Destiny Pitts. Pitts spent three seasons at Minnesota, was already fourth on Minnesota's career three pointers list. Victoria Saxton, it rattles out into the hands of Green. What a pass! Wilson to Jones, a powerful connection. India Jones has tied the Texas A&M career rebounding record and already has 10 points too. Well, and because of India Jones, it's one and done for South Carolina. She's cleaning up on the glass and then A&M is able to push in control on the offensive end. Talk about the energy that India Jones plays with, always running in transition, and, and Aaliyah Wilson just drops a dime. Perfect timing to hit Jones on the run. India Jones is now the all-time rebounding leader at Texas A&M. She passes Anriel Howard. She's also the career leader in double-doubles with 39 for her career, but watch that one. She's only three rebounds away from adding on another double-double. Well, I tell you, you want to get a look from WNBA GMs, you play like India Jones. You don't have to have an offense. You don't have to have a screen. All you need to bring is that energy, that heart, that extra effort you get from India Jones. Traveling in violation on South Carolina. India Jones expected to be the 18th pick, according to Rebecca Lobo, giving out the grades here for her game. And you look at rebound athleticism and her, her range on her shot, that's extending. There's another category that sometimes Rebecca puts on prospects, and that's uh, upside. And I think India Jones has an A in upside as well for the WNBA. Sierra Johnson just picked up her second foul. So Anna Dramana checks in for Johnson. Aaliyah Boston, she's got range too. And now South Carolina, every time offensively, they need to come down and they need to play through Aaliyah Boston. That will open things up, even for your perimeters. Henderson pushing pace. Bree Beal has a lane to the basket, but traveled. Seven turnovers for South Carolina. Well, both of these big Monday games have NCAA tournament implications. North Carolina is at the Carrier Dome to take on Syracuse at 7 Eastern. Then we head to Stillwater for Kate Cunningham and Oklahoma State hosting number seven Oklahoma, both on ESPN and on the app. Kate Cunningham coming off 40 points yesterday.
Yeah, they played Oklahoma again. They're going to play them again in about two days. It'll be a quick scout turnaround. Very fitting for this COVID season. You see South Carolina again trying to ice the screens, keep the ball on one side, not it, let it come to the middle because that's really the soft spot of the defense. Aaliyah Boston now up to six points. She has matched her shot total from the last two games. She's only taken four attempts. Dawn Staley really wanted to get her more involved. And you look at South Carolina's offense, how complicated was it? Just get the ball and give Aaliyah Boston time to set up, give it to her, she produces. Henderson draws the blocking foul, and India Jones hits the stanchion pretty hard. We'll keep an eye on Jones as her teammates help her up. Texas A&M leads by five. Kelsey, thank you. We do expect these two teams, of course, to be in that top, top 16, and they are both projected right now as number one seeds in the tournament. But also looking towards Greenville, South Carolina, and the SEC tournament this week. A win in this game for either team gives them the number one seed and the SEC regular season title. The loser will be the number two seed in Greenville. Well, and Charlie Cream said that regardless, as long as it's not a blowout today, as far as the NCAA tournament goes, both of these teams would remain as number one seeds. And Dia Jones gets her shot blocked. South Carolina is currently on a 6-0 run. I think that Texas A&M was able to really cause and wreak more havoc when they went with that four-guard lineup with India Jones being the only post on the floor. But you give up rebounding, and then Lily Grissett, in just her, her mid-range game has been so good. Or was that Destiny Pitts? on that short jumper. Yeah, Destiny Pitts. Anaya Russell gets the foul called on her. You don't see Sierra Johnson out there for Texas A&M because she's already picked up two fouls. More fast break points for Destiny Henderson and South Carolina is on top 27-26. 10 straight points for the Gamecocks. Destiny Henderson went one on three, but is just like a Swiss Army knife. She just sliced up the defense and got to the basket. Missed layup by Littleton. But the transition game has really been how the transition and Aaliyah Boston has been how South Carolina has gotten themselves the lead this ball game. Jones trying to get past Victoria Saxton. Alters her shot. A&M has missed seven straight. Now, 
AM switches back to a 2 3 zone. Wilson driving and gets fouled. Aaliyah Boston, or uh, Aaliyah Wilson running in transition in the finish. Just the freshman, Anaya Russell's got to understand. That's a big no no right there. You're beat, you got to let that go because now it's an opportunity for a three point play. AM has led by as many as nine points this afternoon. The Aggies in this 2-3 zone really want to force South Carolina to take shots from the perimeter, keep the ball out of the hands of Aaliyah Boston. Much better shot from Zaya Cook. She's been working on her shooting form, making, she, making sure she gets her feet set. Well, and that was the shot in rhythm, a patient on balance. That's a good shot. Don Staley doesn't have a problem with the number of shots. She just wants her to make take good shots. Clutch shot from Jordan Nixon. She's been known to do that. It'll stay with South Carolina. This is what your point guard can do. Jordan Nixon, again, recognizes that Aaliyah Boston is going to be late there, and Nixon is pulling up, pulling up for the jump shot. Texas A&M calls a timeout, a one-point lead with two minutes to go in the half. Just a couple of seconds back into action, haven't missed anything. Victoria Saxton, a huge rebound. She almost jumped up and grabbed the rim. Saxton. That vertical that she has, she is such a quick leaper off the floor. And she reads the ball like Dennis Rodman when it comes off the rim. She knows her timing and when to go up for it. India Jones picks up her second foul. So Sierra Johnson and India Jones both with two fouls for Texas A&M. Big opportunity for Carolina. Oh, and what South Carolina has got to do is they don't need to just come down and put up quick shots, but good shots if they're coming from the perimeter. Aaliyah Wilson, she's got herself into double figures. Gives it up. Stop and pop for Kayla Wells. And this is what Texas A&M has. With Kayla Wells and Aaliyah Wilson, they are very high efficient scorers right now. South Carolina's got to find that from the perimeter, especially with Aaliyah Boston not in the game. Destiny Littleton lets it fly. And they'll say it was last touched by Texas A&M. See, now would normally be the time, too, that Isaiah Cook can take over, but South Carolina can't afford to turn the ball over. And then they foul. Well, here's our Big Ten SEC Super Tuesday doubleheader on ESPN and the app. It's 7 Eastern, number 5, Illinois and Ann Arbor to take on number 3, Michigan. Then Kentucky at the Pavilion in Oxford squaring off against Ole Miss. We saw that Kentucky Ole Miss matchup in the women's game tonight and Ole Miss getting an upset of the Kentucky women for the second time this season. I'm not even going to try to fill out my bracket for the SEC tournament until today nope. is over. And do it in pencil. <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. <laughs> shot clock is off. South Carolina can take the last shot of the half. Henderson will put up a quick layup. And now it's Texas A&M's turn. 
an SEC regular season title on the line. Alexis Morris has her shot blocked by a me here. Now, remember, too, another player that has a great vertical is Aaliyah Wilson. So you can have a lob play for number two for Texas A&M, and then you have a shooter option with Kayla Wells, who's in the middle of your screen right now. Wilson was trying to get the foul call. No whistle, exactly what we wanted with an SEC regular season title on the line. We got a one point game inside Reed Arena. Let's get you to the studio with Kelsey. For South Carolina and Texas A&M, Cook, Boston and Henderson have combined for 23 points for South Carolina. Wilson, Jones and Wells have combined for 27 points. Well, Texas A&M, they have two players in double figures with Jones and Wilson. So far, the only player for South Carolina in double figures is Destiny Henderson. She has 12. So will Cook and Boston, will they heat up in this second half? Boston went three of four from the field in that opening half, had six points and three rebounds. South Carolina has been trying to get her more involved in this game after she averaged only four shot attempts their last two games. Well, and she has done a nice job of moving herself around in South Carolina, and especially Des Destiny Henderson. She has done the best job of connecting with Aaliyah Boston. South Carolina trying to go back to back SEC regular season titles. It would be the first SEC regular season title for Texas A&M if they can win this game today. Here's Kayla Wells at the elbow just short and the rebound into the hands of Aaliyah Boston. And Texas A&M in a matchup zone right now. Really trying to limit paint points. And they force South Carolina into a turnover. Good job by Jones and Johnson not to foul. And Jordan Nixon pops it at the elbow. Well, she goes, Jordan Nixon does a nice job. She's just far enough from Aaliyah Boston, who can't get there to block her shot, and scores in that open space. Playing against her former AAU teammate, Aaliyah Boston. Steal by Wilson. See, this is where Texas A&M, they have a great advantage when they have Gary Blair who can call out the offenses. Really get scoring wherever he wants it from. Sierra Johnson with the rebound and the bucket. Stolen away. That's the 11th turnover for South Carolina. See the isolation Texas A&M is able to get, but one-on-one -on -one against the Leah Boston, that's tough. It seems as if every time South Carolina reverses the ball, it's reversing away from Aaliyah Boston instead of letting her come to the basketball. And that's an offensive foul on Victoria Saxton. Well, we mentioned Jordan Nixon and Aaliyah Boston. Not the first time that they have played basketball on the same court, but they used to be on the same team playing AAU together. And we had a chance to talk to both of them. One of the stories that stood out was when they were trying out for USA Basketball. Jordan Nixon didn't make the team. Aaliyah Boston did. But Boston started crying, and their AAU coach 
thought Aaliyah Boston was the one that had been cut. Well, that just shows the, what a kind heart Aaliyah Boston has. And she talks about and laughs about what how close a friendship both she and Jordan Dixon have. See, Aaliyah Boston was going to school up in Massachusetts, and Jordan Nixon lived in New York. So at times when they when Boston would come in town to practice with IXL or AAU team, she would stay at Jordan Nixon's house. And these two developed quite a close bond. Yeah, they both credited their AAU coach, Walter Welsh, with the reason they are such vocal players, because you didn't have a choice. You had to talk on the floor if you were going to play for him. Well, I talked to Walter Welsh. He said, if you're not talking, you're not playing good defense. And he would use bricks. If you weren't talking, he would have them. They would have to hold bricks. Or both players, when I mention these towels, well, yes. what happens with the towels is you put them on the floor and you have to push them down the court. Talk about feel the burn. That's exactly what you feel. I think I'd be talking too. It's made a difference in both of their careers. Jick Nixon now at AM and Boston now at South Carolina. Victoria Saxton was just called for her third foul. They'll bring in Leticia Me here. Swatted out by Aaliyah Wilson. What a huge play. Another possession for the Aggies. That's These five teams, straight turnovers for Carolina. These teams play in SEC regular season championship on the line. There's no quit. Winner gets the one seed in Greenville. Loser gets the two seed. India Jones. 12 points, eight rebounds for Jones. Zaya yeah, Cook just that. ran straight into Johnson. And that's not a good shot. She dribbled into trouble and then forced the shot up. Where again, on a busted play, India Jones from the two-man game. When the defense focused on Nixon, then what does Jones do? Cut hard to the basket, and Nixon delivers it perfectly. Only a Boston for three. And it's a blocking foul called on Lily Grissett. We've been talking about Nia Jones. She has 12 points and nine rebounds. Talk about a double-double machine. She's got it early in the third quarter almost. She's already become Texas A&M's all-time rebounds leader tonight with those nine rebounds passing Anriel Howard. Here's our NBA Sunday West Coast matchup on ESPN and the app. Steph and the Warriors start a four-game road trip against LeBron and the Lakers. Our coverage begins at 7 Eastern with Countdown. Now keep an eye on Aaliyah Boston and where the ball is. When she comes to the basketball, they waited on her that time. That's much better before the ball was getting reversed, before they even gave her a look. Henderson in the paint. Out of bounds off of a and &M. The kick out to Aaliyah Boston. India Jones tippy toe on the sideline to keep it alive. She's everywhere today. She's got that double double. 
14th of the season. Just relentless. It was he. That extra effort. And Texas A&M didn't get it over half court in time. We'll step aside. A close game with an SEC regular season title on the line. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Pizza Hut. Order today at PizzaHut.com. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Lindia Jones is dropping tracks on and off the basketball court. A music studies major already has her degree. Extremely talented off the court and also a candidate for SEC player of the year. And the numbers and the performance that she's had today certainly make her look like one of those top candidates. She has been relentless. 12 points, 11 rebounds, and she set the new career record for rebounds at Texas A&M. Look, we still have another quarter and a half to go. But you're looking at SEC Player of the Year. The uh, Leah Boston has really, she would be tops of my list. But India Jones, when you look at her total body of work, it's not just about points, but how she impacts the game. And she does so both offensively, she's on the glass, and then defensively as well, blocking shots. It'll be Texas A&M ball. South Carolina has not scored in the third quarter. Well, Aaliyah Boston attempted a three, but it's not been in the paint. So she has got to be able to get touches in scoring positions. Winner of this game is the SEC regular season champion, the number one seed in Greenville in the SEC tournament next week. Jordan Nixon, hello. Aggies have outscored South Carolina 10-0 in the third quarter. And Jordan Nixon, off ball screens, is finding the space. And when that door, that window opens, she's been ready to pull the trigger. And that time, knocked down the three. Third foul called on Sierra Johnson. So Anna Dramana checks in for A&M. Yeah, and that will be a foul on Aaliyah Wilson. Eric Root was making that point right away. That's a foul. That's a foul. I don't know if Wilson had a choice. She couldn't stop herself. Body control. Got to have it. Even the easy buckets Carolina can't buy right now. And then for... Texas A&M, their scoring ability because they've got so many different options. But there's a turnover for South Carolina to take advantage. Won't get the layup, but Jordan Nixon is whistled for the foul and Zaya Cook goes to the free throw line. This is really a good foul though from Jordan Nixon. If you're gonna go up to block it, make sure that there's not an opportunity to get the, the layup and get to the free throw line. Misses it. Well, both of these big Monday games have NCAA tournament implications. North Carolina and Syracuse will be first up at seven. Then we head to Stillwater for Oklahoma State and number seven, Oklahoma. The rematch in about two days, both on ESPN and the app. Wow. Aaliyah Wilson, not only did she come down full court, but cross court and with the finish. Grissette answers. Aaliyah Wilson for AM has 13 points. Oh, 
And one of the things that Don Staley talked about was executing your offense. Which team can do it better? Even Gary Blair said, which team can execute late in shot clock? So far in this game, the execution award, it's going to Texas A&M. South Carolina just three points in the third quarter. Foul on Anna Tremina. Her first. But you look, Tremina's got five fouls to give, and the energy and effort she's bringing defensively against Aaliyah Boston, that's what the Aggies need. Next foul by AM, and Carolina will be shooting. Boston whistled for the foul on India Jones. Boston second. India Jones plays with the mindset of, I'm going to do the extra. She doesn't get tired. She continues to run to bring that effort. That's why she can put her opponents in some problems. Uh, Gary Blair wanted that to be a shooting foul, and I'm not disagreeing with him. India Jones was in the act of shooting. The foul was on the block. And then Bree Beal gets Kayla Wells with the body. Gary Blair still pleading his case to Tyna Napier. <laughs> South Carolina is going to have to regroup. They're going to have to find options offensively. And they got to finish when they get an opportunity in the paint. It's been incredible how many missed easy shots under the basket. Jordan Nixon could not be more clutch. Taken over at point guard and has Texas A&M in a spot for an SEC regular season title. Jordan Nixon stepping up big. Point guard transfer from Notre Dame. She wants a ring. She wants to wear a ring and be the regular season SEC champion. Here we go. Yes! Big time! Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. Champ week coming up, but we're ready to crown a champion in Reed Arena this afternoon. Courtney Lyle, Carolyn Peck with you. Texas A&M benefiting from a cold South Carolina team. The Gamecocks have gone one for 12 in the third quarter. The Texas A&M has gotten hot, especially Jordan Nixon and India Jones is just continuing how she started in the first half. Second field goal in this quarter for South Carolina, thanks to Zaya Cook. The clock is running, and South Carolina has extended full court pressure. Jordan Nixon has been huge in this quarter for Texas A&M, has eight of their 17 points. Draymond a rolling to the basket. Zaya Cook to Beal for three. Bree Beal with a big three-pointer. She knocks down the shot, but that was early in the shot clock. Leads sometime, but not enough for Texas A&M. Texas A&M pulls ahead in the third quarter. They outscore South Carolina 19 to 8. 
just 10 minutes away from their first SEC regular season title. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship on ESPN. What a third quarter for Texas A&M. They outscore South Carolina 19 to eight. Aggies lead at 54. 42, Jordan Nixon, a big reason why. Jordan Nixon had eight points and three assists. She understood if you aren't going to pick her up defensively, coming in transition or off ball screens, when her opportunity presented itself, she was going to take full advantage. Winner of this game is the SEC regular season champion. They will get the number one seed in the SEC tournament. Both teams projected to be number one seeds in the NCAA tournament no matter what happens today. Well, but Charlie Cream said as long as it's not a blowout, if Texas A&M right. well, is yes. able to, to pull away, then the committee may reconsider. So South Carolina, Don Staley needs to remind her team if you want to maintain a secure number one seed, you need to take care of business today. South Carolina had plenty of opportunities to score the basketball in the third quarter, especially shots in the paint. They just couldn't get them to go through the hoop. Well, two areas where South Carolina finishing in the paint and also at the free throw line. Those are the two freebies, the gimmies you got to be good at. They say that's her second on Boston on the excuse me the second foul on Boston. I thought I already had her down for two fouls. Defensively, South Carolina has got to find a way to get touches for Aaliyah Boston. And see, now for her to touch it, she's out of her scoring position. Not just let her touch it, but where it's an advantage for her to score the ball. Dramana with a block. It'll stay with Texas A&M. Aaliyah Boston still hasn't scored in the second half. The defense from Texas A&M, Anna Dramana, uses her length, and she goes upstairs to get the block against Aaliyah Boston. She has given Texas A&M some huge minutes. Sierra Johnson is on the bench with three fouls. Oh, and Aaliyah Wilson snuck in, but couldn't finish. Cook to Henny, back to Cook. That's a good shot from Zaya Cook, just not able to knock it down. There's another missed layup by South Carolina. Anna Dramana again, affecting South Carolina's shot. Anna Dramana being the backstop for Texas A&M with Sierra Johnson on the bench. Big minutes for number 33. Texas A&M calls timeout. Eight minutes to go in this one. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. Try the new jalapeno popper chicken sandwich and salad today at participating U.S. Wendy's. The SEC Women's Basketball Tournament early round games over on the SEC Network and the app. The first round game is Wednesday with coverage starting at 4 Eastern. We'll see Thursday's second round games start at 11 a.m. Eastern. Same thing for Friday's quarterfinals. We'll have you covered with the semifinals on ESPNU. The championship 
a week from today at 2 Eastern on ESPN2. Will it be a rematch of this game we're playing right now? Well, South Carolina's got to solve the offensive drought problem that they have experienced this season. We've been watching the big three for both of these teams. Texas A&M's big three of Wilson, Jones, and Wells have hit their average. And you add in Jordan Nixon, who is another player in double figures. South Carolina, Cook, Boston, and Henderson. Out of those three, Destiny Henderson, the only player in double figures. And that's big because Zion Cook, Destiny Henderson, she has, Destiny Henderson has 12. But Aaliyah Boston, only six points. She is three of eight from the floor. And when she has touched the basketball in this second half, it hasn't really been in the strength of her game position, which is in the lane area or face up at the free throw line area. It's mainly been getting the ball up top at the three point line. That's why she has not scored in the second half. Kayla Wells. Foul on India Jones, her third. Sierra Johnson already has three fouls for Texas A&M, not on the floor right now. But India Jones has had such an impact on today's game, even though she drew a foul there. Just the energy and effort, showing the leadership for her Aggies team. 16 points and 12 rebounds for India Jones, her 14th double-double of the season. Well, let me tell you, she's one of the reasons that Texas A&M is so good. The other reason is they have seen just about every type of defense you could possibly see. Do you want to take away the inside game? Well, Texas A&M has perimeter shooters. You want to take away Aaliyah Wilson? Well, Jordan Nixon steps up big. That depth and versatility has gotten them to an almost perfect record. Just one loss on the season as this will stay with South Carolina. A&M's only loss to LSU, who they later beat a couple weeks later. Well, and Gary Blair makes so many comparisons to this team, to his 2011 team that won a national championship. He has high hopes for this club. And Jordan Nixon steps up and takes the charge. An offensive foul on Zaya Cook. Nixon has been a game changer for Texas A&M in this second half. She has talked to us before about how difficult it has been to learn to run point for Gary Blair, but it is all paying off. Well, if you just listen to Gary Blair as his point guard, he's going to put you in the position. If you pick up what he's selling, he will help you to be the conductor, to orchestrate on the court where the basketball needs to be. And they, Texas A&M does a nice job of putting players in their strengths, scoring in the strengths of where they should be on the floor instead of having to create it. Era and sticks with Texas A&M. Winner of this game is the SEC regular season champion, and they get the one seed in Greenville next week. The loser gets the two seed. South Carolina is trying to go back to back, but they're down ten. Now we saw the, the plus sign on Gary Blair's hand when he was on the sideline. That's to remind him to be positive. It also looked like he was holding a coin in his hand. I wonder if that's, he's got a good luck charm <laughs> trying to pull this thing through throughout this fourth quarter. Zaya Cook, a welcome bucket. And it's a 7-0 run for South Carolina. They only put up eight points in the third quarter. 
but that happens because Aaliyah Boston cut it, caught the ball in a scoring position down low. That attracts two people. That allows Zaya Cook to have some time. When the ball comes inside against that zone, when it collapses in, Zaya Cook spaced out on the opposite side. Aaliyah Barson knew exactly where number one Zaya Cook was going to be. Cook has 15 points, four rebounds, two assists. Look at India Jones. Yep. I love it. I love it. And Grandma, Miss Claire, has got to be extremely proud. She's always told her granddaughter to be extraordinary, to do the extra things. Lily Grissett with the offensive board for Carolina. There it is, Aaliyah Boston off the window, five-point game. Big-time players have to step up in big-time moments. Only five and a half minutes left to determine who is going to be the champion. Texas A&M trying to stop this 9-0 run by South Carolina. The determination, the fight and grit inside by Aaliyah Boss, and she's not giving up on the play and finally gets the ball to go down inside. Boston will take a seat with three fouls, 5-17 on the clock. Sierra Johnson, the shot fake to the line she goes. I can't imagine Aaliyah Boston is going to be on the bench for very long. What with three fouls, look, a lot of damage can happen with her absence. Oh, told you. <laughs> what could be long? She's right back in the game. Keep an eye on rebounding. Right now, South Carolina's winning that battle 40 to 31. It's going to be crucial down the stretch. Texas A&M has been out rebounded in four of its last five games. Henderson for the long ball. Crushed it. Again, where did the ball go? Aaliyah Boston in a scoring position, attracting two people. She's a willing passer. Last time when it went into Aaliyah Boston, she went backside. This time she came same side, and Destiny Henderson was right there to answer the call. Gamecocks were outscored 19 to eight in the third quarter. They've outscored Texas A&M 12 to three in the fourth. Into Boston. Cook at the top. Boston rebound. Free Beal. Texas A&M has missed its last seven shots. Second Gary chance Blair's, coming. Gary Blair's trying to take advantage of Aaliyah Boston guarding Sierra Johnson because she's not coming up. Boston's not coming up and defending the ball screen. Aaliyah Wilson makes the layup look easy. She has 15.
South Carolina's hit a couple of threes, but they don't need to live and die by the three-point line. And the last four shot attempts have all come from behind the arc. For a set whistle for the foul. Three on her set sends Jordan Nixon to the line, who leads the SEC in free throw percentage at 90.3%. Well, and that could spell trouble for South Carolina because the rest of the way, the rest of this game, Texas A&M on every foul is going to the free throw line. A&M as a group, a 73% team from the free throw line. Boston knocks one down. Her eighth three-pointer of the season. Well, you watch Aaliyah Boston off the dribble hand. Destiny Henderson sets that up. With that attack, dribble to the middle, makes Jordan Nixon bite. That gives Aaliyah Boston time to knock down that three. Boston with a double-double, 11 points, 10 rebounds, her 12th double-double of the season, her ninth in SEC play. South Carolina just down by three points now after trailing by 15. Well, and Dawn Staley called that timeout. She wants to get her, her defense set because if she is going to press, she's got to come out of something with that. She can't be beat down the court and let Texas A&M beat the press and then go on to score. So you've got to know when you're pressing what you're dropping back into, and you also have got to adjust how you're defending those ball screens, especially Aaliyah Boston, because Texas A&M has taken advantage coming off, and they are willing to take those long twos because Jordan Nixon and Aaliyah Wilson, look, that's part of the strength of their game. South Carolina will have one timeout remaining. Texas A&M has three timeouts for the final three minutes of this one. Aggies looking for their first SEC regular season championship. See that double high screen from the post for Jordan Nixon. Off of South Carolina. There's 11 seconds on the shot clock, so Texas A&M has to be aware when the ball comes in. They're not. Wow, Texas A&M is one for 10 in the fourth quarter. Cook at the free throw line, short. See, that's a disadvantage with Aaliyah Boston on the perimeter, and if she's not the shooter, she's also not in the position to help rebound. Yeah, Gary Blair wants the ball in the hand of Aaliyah Wilson right now. Kicks back out to Destiny Pitts, a little off to the right, offensive rebound. 90 seconds to go. 
And still, South Carolina, they don't have to foul. They don't have to panic. They just need a defensive stop. It would benefit Texas A&M. Use the full shot clock. Aaliyah Wilson has been so good today. 17 points. Now South Carolina can't waste a lot of time. And no offensive rebounding. You had four white jerseys down low for Texas A&M. Only one black jersey for South Carolina. And Gary Blair wants to take a timeout. Texas A&M will have two timeouts remaining. 45.7 seconds on the clock. Time and score, so important. And Aaliyah Wilson knew exactly how much time she had left. There's about three seconds left on the shot clock. And she is able to go past Aaliyah Wilson, Aaliyah Boston, and get the finish. Wilson with 17 points, eight rebounds, one of three players for Texas A&M in double figures. They have only scored eight points in this quarter. South Carolina has outscored them 15 to eight. But now down the stretch, South Carolina is going to have to, they're gonna have to get a stop early. But if they foul, that's going to put Texas A&M at the free throw line. So they've got to go out, all out after steals. Try to get a five second call right now. The most important thing for Texas A&M, they just need to get the ball in bounds and not turn the ball over. They get it to Johnson. Now, see, I think now South Carolina needs to foul. It's a two possession game. They get a steal into the hands of Bree Beal. Back to the corner to Cook. They reset. Texas A&M. 16.1 seconds away from their first SEC regular season title. And Jordan Nixon is injured. Injury to Jordan Nixon's face. There is blood on her jersey. They're taking a look at her right now. She's been so important in this game. 11 points. She's got five assists. Well, Texas A&M has called a timeout where they're taking a look at Jordan Nixon. Each team with one timeout remaining. Texas A&M ball up 62-57. We're being told Jordan Nixon hit her head on the court. We're not going to show it to you. We'll keep an eye on her, but she's walking over to the Texas A&M bench. They're taking a look at this. Make sure that all the blood has been wiped off on the court if there is any. Here's an angle of what happened to Jordan Nixon. Oh, uh, once she got rid of the ball, just went down and just straight to the court. But now with the blood so, on her jersey, I don't know that they're going to let her come back in the game. Yeah, you can't have blood on your uniform, so I'm not sure if she'll be able to enter back in the game. See, right now, they should have an emergency jersey on the sideline. She just have to take that one off, put another one on. Otherwise, someone's going to have to sub in for her. They're still wiping down the court. 
she's got it on her undershirt too. It's going to be a minute. She has been but so crucial in this game today. And she has, like we said, 11 points, five assists. And now South Carolina is going to have to, again, go for, go after another steal. Try to get a turnover. They've got to come down and score quickly. They're giving her a new uniform. She's got a new undershirt on, a new jersey on. And Jordan Nixon looks ready to come back in this ball game. Like you see her winner tell her teammates, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, winner of this game is the SEC regular season champion. Texas A&M has the ball with 16.1 seconds left. Nixon had to come out of the game with the stoppage of play, so she would be available to come back in after the next dead ball. But South Carolina right now, they have got to foul. They got to go all out for the basketball and then foul right away. And if they can, probably send Sierra Johnson to the free throw line. Aaliyah Wilson only shoots 63%. Johnson at 64% for Texas A&M. So the officials were over at the scorer's table. Gary Blair was asking about something. And then it looked like Alexis Morris maybe was trying to check in the game. She went over to the scorer's table. Well, you got to try to get Alexis Morris in the game. She's an 85% free throw shooter. Gary Blair saying if they score, to call a timeout, get your defense set. South Carolina will have to foul. They get Kayla Wells, who is an 80% free throw shooter. Clock showing 12.2 seconds left. Both teams with one timeout. So now Don Staley has got to make the decision on a rebound or after these made free throws, do you want to rebound it and do you want to call timeout and advance it now or do you want to get it in quick, save that timeout so that if you got another possession, then you would have an opportunity to advance the basketball. And see, Texas A&M has nobody on the free throw line. They're back and ready in case South Carolina just wants to get it and go. free throws for Kayla Wells on senior day. And timeout will be called by South Carolina. 64-57 Texas A&M. 12.2 seconds away from their first SEC regular season championship. I tell you, experience had a lot to do with today as well. When you look at Johnson, Jones, Wells, they've started 86 consecutive games together. They know each other very well. They have competed and put themselves in this position. It's been a long time coming for the Aggies. South Carolina is going to have to go really quick. They've got a lot of ground to make up. Yeah, and they have got to go straight, first available shot. Three, two, it doesn't matter. You just need a quick score. And then right away, foul. Texas A&M, if South Carolina does score, they've got another timeout. They can call a timeout and advance the ball. So at least when they're inbounding it, they're doing it far away from South Carolina's basket. Here we go, 12.2 seconds left. Ball goes into Boston. 
Top of the key. No good. Into the hands of the Aggies. And immediately Kayla Wells is fouled. Closer and closer to the championship. Just the balance of options from Texas A&M. Even when Sierra Johnson got in early foul trouble in the first half, it has been a little bit from everybody. The big buckets that Destiny Pitts had when she came in the game, Jordan Nixon's big max baskets, and now Aaliyah Wilson, or Kayla Wilson. There's so many Aaliyahs. Kayla Wells. <laughs> <laughs> Kayla Wells getting the ball and getting an opportunity now at the free throw line. Nixon is back in the game just for a minute. What a game she has played. Just 5.8 seconds left. Zaya Cook for three. Air balls it. They're cutting down Nets and Reed Arena tonight. Texas A&M wins its first SEC regular season championship. Gary Blair had high hopes for this team. He always wanted to stay in striking distance to have an opportunity to play for the regular season championship with this team. He thought they were special because of the versatility that he had, the experience on his team, and they were able to pull it off today. That depth, that versatility pays off. Four players in double figures for Texas A&M. Their first win over a top five team since the final four back in 2011. They will be the top seed in the SEC tournament in Greenville next week. The question is, will we have a rematch a week from today? As Gary Blair says, game, set, match, gig up. Texas A&M, your regular season champs.